Well, class of 2020, congratulations. My name is Doug Olberding, and I am a professor at Xavier University in sport management. And I've been here for about 21 years, so I know some of you, and some of you I don't know. But congratulations nonetheless. So, um, when I went to college, it was really hard for me to figure out what I wanted to study. I mean, for me, there were so many things that I was interested in. It was very hard for me to sort of narrow things down. Um, I started off in 1982 um, as a communications major, and I don't know, I wasn't so interested in that. Um, uh, and then I had heard that I could make money if I was an accountant, um, and uh, that didn't last very long. Uh, finally, I, I landed on political science, and, and I enjoyed that. It was very interesting to me. Um, and so if you would have asked me when I was 22 years old what I was going to be doing when I was 32 or 42 or 52, I would have given you an answer. But whatever answer I would have given you would have been wrong. I mean... I could not have imagined in 1987 that at the age of 56 years old, I would be a professor teaching at my alma mater in an area called sport management. I mean, it, it, it barely existed in 1987. Also, I could not have imagined that I could sit down at a chair in my little studio here, and make a movie that could be instantaneously broadcast around the world using a device that could fit inside of my pocket. So the point is, the world is going to change in many ways that we cannot possibly imagine today. And so here we are, right, ready to embark on whatever is next. So. Perhaps you've been told to follow your passion, and perhaps some of you have figured out what that passion is. To you, I say congratulations. Others may be a little bit more like me when I was 22 years old. There were a lot of things that I was interested in, but I don't know if I was passionate about any of them. And I think sometimes we tend to confuse passion and interest, especially when we reach milestone moments like graduation, right? There's some pressure to justify what we've done for the last four years and to answer that question, so what are you going to do now? That's a tough question for some of us. So I thought maybe I would give you this to think about. In my mind, there's three things that you can think about, right, as you reach this milestone moment, graduation. So job, career, and vocation. Let's take the easiest one first, job, right? You're gonna have lots and lots of jobs and you likely have lots of jobs right now. Jobs don't always come with financial remuneration. Ask your mom and dad about being a parent. That's a job. So you have multiple jobs right now, right? You are, or I should say you were, a student at Xavier University. That's a job. Maybe you had a part or full-time job to support yourself while you were here. Well, clearly that's a job. Or maybe you were a member of a Xavier University club or a student organization. Or maybe you were on an athletic team. In a real way, those are jobs also. So, so if you think about it, the job is the most immediate, right? And whether we know it or not, we have many jobs right now, and we're likely to have many, many jobs into the future. So career. Well, what's that? A career is it's an occupation. It's something that you do for a significant period in your life. Within your career, there are opportunities for advancement and opportunities to grow. So, so maybe you'll go into marketing, or perhaps you'll go into education, or into the healthcare field, or maybe you're one of those lucky few that get to become a professional athlete or a professional musician. 
Well, guess what? You might have more than one career in your life. You won't have as many careers as jobs. You're going to have way more jobs than you're going to have careers. But I'm willing to wager that most of you, not, not all of you, but most of you will have more than one career in your lifetime. Sometimes you'll change career because, you know, maybe you reach some epiphany moment. That, that's kind of what happened to me. And, and, and if you ask other adults my age, some of them are going to tell you that it happened to them, too. Sometimes there's going to be external circumstances that force your hand. In a very real way, we're seeing that right now. So, so finally, there's vocation. Vocation comes from the Latin word vocare, which means to call. And so we often think of vocation as our calling or that thing that we are meant to do. To know what your vocation is, well, you have to listen. Sometimes there's a lot of noise, and sometimes it can be difficult to hear your calling. Sometimes we think we hear the voice and we head towards it only to find out that it's some sound reflecting off a hard surface, a dead end. But if you listen long enough, I believe you'll hear it. It might not be tomorrow, and it might not be 10 years from now. I mean, everyone's journey is going to be different. I mean, it literally took me 15 years after I graduated from Xavier University before I truly wanted, no, before I truly knew what I wanted to do when I grew up. And so, as I said before, the world is changing now and it's going to continue to change in ways that are unimaginable. So what have we been doing here in this place for the last four years? Well, I believe we've been teaching you to surf. And we think you're ready now. So in a few days, we're going to give you a surfboard. Sorry about that. Props. Now, I don't know how many of you have tried surfing. I have, and I can tell you it's not easy. And the seas are kind of rough right now. So you may grab this board and you may paddle out into the ocean and you may spin around and face the shore and look over your shoulder and that first wave might come crashing down right on top of you. Or, or maybe you grab that board and paddle out and face the shore and you turn on and you see the wave and you paddle as hard as you can and you spring up and you get on that board and you fall off after a couple of meters. Or maybe you're one of those lucky ones, right, who get out there, they paddle on the board, they spring up, they catch that wave and ride it terrified all the way into the shore, right? So, so whether the wave crashes on top of you or whether you ride it into the shore or something in between, right, if you want to be a better surfer, you got to grab that board and paddle back out and look for the next wave. And every time you do this, you'll get a little bit better at surfing. You'll still fall off the board sometimes, and you'll have some successes as well. Think about it. If you think about it really hard, I feel like this is what work life is like. You have to continue to learn if you want to grow. So what I'm supposed to be doing here today is, is giving you advice, right, on becoming a lifelong learner, tips for being a lifelong learner. So I've thought about this and I've got a few. The first, stay curious. I mean, if you don't know what your passion is right now, what your calling is right now, that's okay. Pay attention to what interests you, what excites you. Keep learning, keep reading, keep exploring in that area. That's one way to figure out your passion. The second is have a plan, but be flexible. Don't be afraid to improvise. Um, sometimes, you know, circumstances dictate, right, that we adjust our plan. So don't be afraid to change. Third, 
Surround yourself with smart, creative, and thoughtful people and learn from them. And related to that, be humble. Have the ability to accept thoughtful criticism when it's coming from a good place, from people that you respect. I mean, don't be afraid to to throw something away and start over. After all, I mean, just because you work really, really hard on something doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. And then another, take a technology break. I mean, we are in such a connected world. We have phones, we have computers. We can communicate with people at the click of a button and tap of a screen. But leave that phone at home sometime. Turn it off. Go for a walk. Go ride your bike. Be out in nature. Let your mind wander. Stay open to inspiration and new ideas. Meditate and pray. Those are important. And finally, my last one, keep learning. I know it's a little bit like the first one, but keep learning. It's never too late to learn. When I went back to earn my doctoral degree, I was almost 30 years old. And I let people, or people tried to talk me out of it. I mean, I gave up a good job and a career that I had prepared for. Uh, I earned a master's degree and I earned a bachelor's degree in political science. And that's what I was doing, right? But it really took me that long to know what my true calling was. So class of 2020, I know that this is not the way that you thought your college career was going to end. Nobody saw this coming. But I salute you. I truly do salute you. And I wish you the best. And always remember, go Xavier.